on December 6, 2025, something happened over the Pacific that sent a shockwave through the global military establishment. High above the strategically critical Mayako Strait, a Chinese J-15 flying shark fighter jet, launched from the aircraft carrier Liani, scored a confirmed fire control radar lock on a Japanese F-15. The distance, a jaw-dropping 148 kilometers. Now, this wasn't just a fleeting blip on a screen. This was a hard lock, the kind of rock-solid targeting that a pilot needs to fire a missile and expect to kill. For decades, the core doctrine of Western air power, especially for the US Air Force, has been brutally simple. See first, shoot first, kill first. That 148-kilometer lock doesn't just poke holes in that doctrine. It threatens to blow it wide open. This one incident whispers a terrifying possibility that America's most advanced and expensive stealth fighters, the F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II, might not be the invisible apex predators they were built to be. While Japan's air self-defense force felt the immediate chill, the long-term strategic tremor was felt all the way in the Pentagon. The era of assumed American A superiority is now facing a direct and credible threat. So, how did this happen? Why does it represent such a monumental shift in military tech? And what does it mean for the future of war in the skies? So what's the big deal about 148 kilometers? To get it, you have to understand the philosophy that has defined American air power since Vietnam. First look, first shot, first kill. It's a simple idea. Use better sensors and longer-range missiles to take out enemy jets long before they even know they are in a fight. This concept is the very soul of planes like the F-22 Raptor, a machine built to own the sky by being a ghost to its enemies while seeing everything itself. This has been a winning combo of stealth technology, which shrinks a plane's radar signature, and potent missiles like the AIM-120 AMRAAM. The AMRAAM has been the gold standard for beyond visual range combat, with an effective range somewhere between 100 to 160 kilometers, though the chance of a kill drops off sharply at the far end. But the secret source has always been launching from surprise, with the enemy pilot blissfully unaware until their own jet screams a missile warning in the final, terrifying seconds. The 148 kilometer event smashes that entire paradigm. A basic search radar can spot a plane from hundreds of kilometers out, giving you a vague blip. But a fire control lock is a different beast entirely. It means the radar isn't just seeing a target, it's tracking it with such terrifying precision, its speed, altitude, and direction, that it has a complete firing solution. It's the digital equivalent of putting a sniper's crosshaze on a target. When a pilot gets a lock warning, they have to assume a missile is already in the air. They must immediately start evasive trashing maneuvers, dumping chaff and flays, bleeding precious energy and fuel, and abandoning whatever their mission was. Pulling this off from 148 kilometers away against a capable fighter like Japan's F-15J is a stunning flex of capability. It forces Western military planners to confront a horrifying question. If a Chinese J-15 can get a firing solution on a non-stealthy F-15 from that range, from what range can its network detect and eventually target a low observable stealth fighter like the F-35? That safety buffer stealth was meant to provide has just dramatically shrunk. The location is just as telling as the tech. The Mayako Strait is a vital choke point between the Japanese islands of Mayako and Okinawa. For China's navy, it's a primary gateway into the wider Pacific Ocean. By staging this demonstration in this specific corridor, Beijing wasn't just testing gear. It was sending a loud and clear message to Japan and the United States. Even in international airspace, your assets are now inside a Chinese weapons engagement zone that is bigger and deadlier than you thought. So, how did China pull this off? The answer probably isn't a single magic bullet, but a masterful fusion of several advancing technologies, a system of systems that's far scarier than any one breakthrough. There are a couple of ways this could have happened, and both are deeply concerning. First, the less likely, but still possible scenario, a pure, brute force leap in the J-15's own onboard radar. Modern fighters use active electronically scanned array, or AESA radars. Think of old radars as a big dish that is to physically swing around to find something. An AESA is a flat panel packed with thousands of tiny transmit or receive modules that steer the radar beam electronically. This allows it to scan huge chunks of the sky, track multiple targets, and even perform electronic warfare all at once. The power of an AESA comes down to its semiconductor materials. For a long time, the US had a huge lead with materials like gallium arsenide. But China has been dumping staggering resources into next-gen materials like gallium nitride, 
which are more powerful and efficient. It's possible they've made a radar with the raw power and sensitivity to get a stable fire control lock at 148 kilometers all on its own. It would be an incredible and deeply worrying feat of engineering. For the pilot on the receiving end, none of this feels theoretical. A fire control warning at that distance doesn't just mean you've been detected. It means your jet may already be inside a missile's no escape zone before you even realize the fight has started. But the second and much more likely explanation is even more strategically terrifying, off-board sense of fusion. This is the networked kill web in action. In this scenario, the J-15 that locked the F-15 might not have done most of the heavy lifting. The Lianning carrier group it was flying from almost certainly had one or more Type 055 destroyers, ships so powerful they are often called cruisers. These warships are packed with massive ESA radar rays. It's entirely possible that a Type 055 or a land-based radar, or even a Chinese KJ-500 AWACS plane, first spotted the F-15. That tracking data was then fused and zapped over your data link to the J-15 pilot. The J-15's own radar then only needed to focus a narrow, high-energy beam in the exact direction provided by the network, allowing it to get a fame lock from much farther away than it ever could alone. From a command perspective, this is the nightmare scenario. You're no longer fighting a single aircraft. You're fighting an invisible web where every sensor feeds every shooter, and killing one node does nothing to shut the system down. This networked approach is the heart of China's anti-access Awaria denial, A2 UAD, strategy. It weaves a seamless web of sensors and shooters, where any platform, a ship, a plane, a satellite, can feed targeting data to any other platform. This makes the whole system incredibly hard to kill. You can't just take out one fighter, you have to take down the entire network. Of course, a long-distance lock is only scary if you have a missile that can go the distance. And hey, China has made terrifying progress. The PL-15 is the PLA Air Force's primary long-range air-to-air missile, and it's believed to have a range well over 200 kilometers, handily outranging the American AMRO. The PL-15 reportedly uses a dual-pulse rocket motor. That means it can fire once to get up to speed and altitude, coast for a while, then reignite for the final attack run, giving the target pilot almost no time or energy left to escape. When you pair a 200 km plus missile with a proven ability to get a fire control lock at 148 km, the first shot advantage flips decisively. A Chinese pilot can now launch from a distance where an American pilot can't even shoot back, creating a vast, no-escape zone and completely changing the rules of an aerial duel. This isn't just about two jets in the sky. The fallout from this event hits right at the heart of the Pentagon's multi-trillion dollar bet on stealth. America's premier air superiority fighter, the F-22, and its workhorse F-35, were both built on the promise of being incredibly hard to detect. Now, stealth has never been a true invisibility cloak. It's about delaying and degrading detection. It works by shaping a jet to bounce radar waves away from the receiver and using special materials to absorb that energy. The goal is to shrink the range at which an enemy can get a solid lock. An F-35 might be visible to a big search radar from far away, but the distance for a fire control lock is supposed to be much, much shorter, well inside the F-35's own weapon range. This 148 km lock on a conventional F-15 changes the math. If China's network sensors are sensitive enough to pull that off, it means the effective range against a stealthy target is also getting longer. While the exact numbers are top secret, the fundamental advantage of stealth is being chipped away. Analysts now worry China is getting close to being able to get a weapons quality track on a stealth fighter from outside the effective range of the F-35's missiles. This would force F-35 pilots into a defensive fight, relying on electronic warfare to survive, or needing escort from specialized jammer aircraft like the EA-18G Growler. Suddenly, the stealth fighter isn't the lone wolf predator it was designed to be. The implications for America's strategic bomber force are even bigger. The new B-21 radar is designed to be the ultimate ghost, penetrating the world's most advanced air defenses to hold any target at risk. Its entire survival depends on slipping through those networks unseen. But if the very foundation of those networks, the ability to fuse data from multiple sensors across huge distances, is improving this fast, the B-21's job just got exponentially harder. Beyond the tech, this was a masterclass in psychological warfare. For decades, the US and its allies have operated with a comfortable technological cushion. This event is China's calibrated, deliberate announcement that the cushion is gone. It's designed to plant a seed of doubt in the minds of Western pilots, planners, 
and politicians. It forces a risk recalculation for every patrol, every freedom of navigation operation, every military exercise in the Indo-Pacific. They all now have to contend with the reality that Chinese forces can reach out and touch them from distances once thought safe. This is coercion by technology, a way to shape behavior without ever firing a shot. It's a statement that the Western Pacific is no longer a permissive environment. The Pentagon isn't just sitting on its hands. This 148 kilometers lock isn't a cause for panic so much as a powerful catalyst, hitting the accelerator on a host of next generation programs already in the works. The US response is a multi-front effort to rebalance the scales in senses, weapons, and networks. The centerpiece of the A Force's answer is the Next Generation A Dominance, or NGAD program. And it's crucial to understand NGAD is not just a new fighter jet. It's a family of systems, a whole new way of thinking about air power. At its core will be a sixth-generation crewed fighter built for extreme range and lethality. But it won't fly alone. It will be the quarterback for a team of uncrewed wingmen called Collaborative Combat Aircraft, or CCAs. Imagine these semi-autonomous drones flying alongside the main fighter. Some will be sensor mules pushed forward to sniff out threats. Others will be weapons trucks loaded with extra missiles. Still others might be electronic warfare platforms dedicated to jamming the enemy's network. It's a distributed, resilient, and more lethal approach designed to counter China's kill web with one of its own. To fight back against the PL-15's range advantage, the US is fielding its own next-gen missile, the AIM-260 Joint Advanced Tactical Missile. Details are hush-hush, but the AIM-260 is explicitly designed to match or beat the PL-15's range, giving the first shot capability back to American pilots. It ensures that if a US pilot gets into a duel, they aren't starting at an immediate disadvantage. And remember, future battles will be fought just as much in the electromagnetic spectrum as in the physical world. The US is pouring money into advanced electronic warfare. This isn't just about crude jamming anymore. We're talking sophisticated digital attacks, spoofing data links, injecting false targets into enemy networks, and using focused energy to fry sensitive electronics. The goal is to turn China's network strength into a crippling weakness. If you can't trust the data your sensors are giving you, the entire kill web collapses. Finally, America's most durable advantage has always been its network of allies. This incident will undoubtedly push for even deeper integration between US, Japanese, and other allied forces. This means more joint training, shared intelligence, and creating a unified, allied sensor network that can see across the entire theater. By linking American, Japanese, and Australian sensor grids, the Allies can build a picture of the battle space that's more complete than anything China can generate alone. It's countering a network with a stronger, more diverse network. That radar lock on December 6th wasn't just a new record on a stat sheet. It was the starting pistol for a new and far more dangerous era in military history. It signaled that the age of comfortable, uncontested American air superiority, an age that has defined global security for 30 years, is officially over. The technological gap has closed. That 148-kilometer lock wasn't a miracle weapon. It was a product of a mature, integrated, and advanced military system, one designed with the express purpose of challenging American power. This new reality doesn't make American air power obsolete, not by a long shot, but it does mean its dominance is no longer a given. The skies over the Western Pacific are now a fiercely contested space, where victory will be decided not by the quality of a single plane, but by the strength of the network that connects them all. The US and its allies are now locked in a high-stakes race, a race to build a faster, smarter, and deadlier network before their adversaries perfect their own. So, what do you think? Is this the moment that marks the end of American dominance in the skies, or the beginning of a new, more complex technological arms race? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you found this breakdown valuable, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more deep dives into the tech and strategy shaping our future. Thanks for watching.